Hey, hey, and welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining us, and I appreciate you hanging out with us. As always, you can check out all the other great episodes we have on the podcast. We are now on to episode number 43. So this one is all about the metabolic and endocrine system. And the goal today is to talk about some of the things that you need to know in order to help you out with the thyroid and parathyroid hormones. And I've got a quick cheat sheet that you can check out. So be sure to, you can, easiest way to do that is just reach out and contact me, ptfinalexam.com slash contact, and you'll be able to reach out. I'll send you this cheat sheet for parathyroid and thyroid hormones. So when it comes to the metabolic and endocrine system, it does cover, we don't necessarily have any examination uh, section on the exam related to the metabolic and endocrine system. However, we do have a few questions related to its differential diagnosis and its effects on intervention. And so today I wanted to talk about a practice question related to these endocrine hormones and talk a little bit about what they would result in. So without further ado, let's dive into our practice question. So as always, I'll read through the practice question and then pause for a moment while you select your answer and we'll move on and we'll talk about the rationale. And then I'll talk about some of the, the bits and pieces you need to know related to the thyroid and parathyroid hormones. All right, here you go. Here is your question. A 78-year-old patient is being examined by a physical therapist in an outpatient setting. The patient's primary complaints include bilateral hand arthralgia, generalized muscle weakness, and excessive fatigue. In addition, the patient reports sensory loss bilaterally in a stalking gator distribution. The patient also reports passing several large kidney stones in the last three weeks. Based on this patient's presentation, which of the following additional signs or symptoms would most likely be present? All right, so this is a, a question asking about 78-year-old patient. In outpatient setting, primary complaints include bilateral hand arthralgia, muscle weakness, excessive fatigue, bilateral stalking, or, or let's see, sensory disturbance, sensory loss in the bilateral gator distribution, as well as several large kidney stones. So which of the following additional signs or symptoms would most likely be present? Number one, dry scaly skin. Number two, muscular tetany. Number three, respiratory muscle spasms. And number four, vertebral compression fractures. Dry scaly skin, muscular tetany, respiratory muscle spasms, or vertebral compression fractures. So this question clearly asking about the parathyroid hormone. So the correct answer is that number four, vertebral compression fractures. So this patient, they're exhibiting signs and symptoms that are consistent with a hyperparathyroidism. And when you're talking about parathyroidism or hyperparathyroidism, essentially what is happening is that you're pulling calcium out of the bones and putting it into the bloodstream. And so that's why you get these symptoms, especially uh, muscular, sorry, not muscular, skeletal bone mineral density lost, especially in the vertebral column as well. You can get it anywhere, but uh, really that vertebral column, that's where you get those spinal compression fractures or vertebral compression fractures related to bone mineral density loss. Uh, other, let's see, other signs of hyperparathyroidism include that bone decalcification, we talked about that. Gout, so gout is just where you have a calcification or, or calcified infiltrates, especially in the hands and feet, especially in the feet. Sensory disturbances and kidney stones. These are huge, huge parts of hyperparathyroidism. You get lots of calcium floating through the bloodstream. It is filtered out in the kidneys. So you get the kidney stones and then it's being pulled out of the bones. And so you get a you get the bone mineral density loss. These other items, dry scaly skin, muscular tetany, and respiratory muscle spasms, all of those are consistent with hypoparathyroidism. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the, the different factors related to the parathyroid gland. So as you know, parathyroid, that's located on the posterior aspect of both lobes of the thyroid gland. The parathyroid hormone, its job is to maintain appropriate serum calcium levels. And so you can imagine that as you boost or increase parathyroid hormone, you would boost calcium levels or uh, serum calcium levels in the bloodstream. So very often, this is this is regulated by the kidneys a bit. If, you, if you're getting all of your calcium flooding out of your kidneys, then it would stimulate your parathyroid hormone to try to pull more calcium out of the, out of the bones. And so you get this, uh, 
the significant correlation between blood calcium levels and parathyroid hormone. So hyperparathyroidism, and I'll talk through some of this. Those of you watching the video over on YouTube, I am gonna post a video of this because I thought it was really important to spell it out so you could see it visually. So be sure to check this out if you're listening to this on iTunes or Google Play or Spotify, be sure to head over to YouTube where you can see this and then you can head over to ptfinalexam.com slash contact and get the cheat sheet that I've got posted here as well. So hyperparathyroidism, this includes lethargy, drowsiness, paresthesia, fatigue, hyperactive deep tendon reflexes, reflexes, as well as the glove or stocking sensory loss. And a lot of times this is referred to as the gaiter distribution. So if you're familiar with like boot gaiters, it's a, a type of clothing that covers the gap between your boot and your pants. And so the gaiter distribution would be down the stocking, like if you were wearing tall socks, that's just what we're referring to there. Proximal muscle weakness, atrophy, bone decalcification, especially resulting in fractures or bone decreased bone mineral density. You get that gout, gout as well as arthralgia. So one of the big differential diagnosers or diagnosis things to consider with, uh, with hyperparathyroidism is rheumatoid arthritis because rheumatoid arthritis often affects the hands, often presents it with a bilateral distribution. However, the key here is that you get hyperactive deep tendon reflexes, sensory loss in the glove or the stocking pattern, as well as hypercalcemia such as, and the results of hypercalcemia include polyuria or excessive urination, polydipsia or excessive thirst and constipation. So you're essentially having troubles with both bowel and bladder and producing those kidney stones. So that is hyperparathyroidism. Let's talk briefly about hypoparathyroidism. Hypoparathyroidism, this can result in personality changes, dry, scaly, or hyperpigmented skin, a thinning of the hair, or you get brittle hair or nails, neuromuscular excitability. This one's interesting. You get, for hypoparathyroidism, you can get respiratory muscle spasticity, so specifically the intercostals and the diaphragm, go into spasm or essentially getting into a little bit of tetany there where you have hyper excitability or neuromuscular excitability. Also results in cardiac arrhythmias or eventual heart failure and then nausea, vomiting and GI disturbances as well. So you could get diarrhea or constipation related to hypoparathyroidism as well as abdominal pain. So hypoparathyroidism, this means that you are not getting enough calcium into the bloodstream, which can result in that neuromuscular excitability. So hyperparathyroid, you get weak bones and proximal muscle weakness, and then paresthesias in the stocking or glove pattern, whereas hypoparathyroidism, personality changes, dry scaly skin, as well as neuro, neuromuscular excitability, intercostal and diaphragm specifically going into spasm. So there you go, that is the parathyroid hormone. Remember, it's, it's involved heavily in calcium regulation or serum calcium levels. And I'll talk just very briefly about thyroid here just because it is related, obviously, parathyroid located on the back of the thyroid glands. The thyroid glands, this is what I consider to be the metabolic RPM or the metabolic, uh, <laughs> the metabolic uh, rate uh, limiter here. So T3 and T4, these are used or they're essentially the, the metabolism of your body, that as you increase T3 and T4, you increase or ramp up metabolism. As you decrease that, you decrease metabolism. So hyperthyroidism, this is also called Graves' disease, where you have tremors, increased heart rate, palpitations, increased respiratory rate. Hyperthyroidism, you've really ramped things up. Polyuria, hypermetabolism, uh, you also get a bulging of the eyes or weakness of the extraocular muscles, warm flushed skin, uh, all, you can also get chronic periarthritis, or pain around all of the joints related to hyperthyroidism. Hypothyroidism, a type or the most common type of hypothyroidism is called Hashimoto's thyroiditis or a loss or a decrease in thyroid production. This results in a slowing or a decrease in metabolic rate. So you get a uh, lots of anxiety, fatigue, uh, bradycardia, skin pallor, cold intolerance, all of the... Uh, all everything that you would associate with a decreased metabolism, non impeding edema, uh, yeah, cold intolerance, weight gain, disproportionate to cal caloric intake, as well as uh, proximal mus muscle weakness, paresthesias, and prolonged or delayed deep tendon reflexes. 
So there you go. There is the thyroid and parathyroid glands in a nutshell. As we talked about, parathyroid very much related to calcium levels, whereas thyroid is related to your metabolic rate. So think about the engine of your metabolism either revving up or revving down based on the RPMs from the T3 and T4 hormones coming from the thyroid. So there you go. As always, you can head over to ptfinalexam.com. We're also starting up our classes for the January 2021 exam. As you know, we repeat these every quarter. And if you don't mind, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes or Google Play or Spotify. It really helps get the word out. And so if you don't mind, please consider that. And uh, if you want this cheat sheet related to the thyroid and parathyroid system, please just head over to ptfinalexam.com slash contact, and we'll get that over to you as quickly as we can. So hope you're having a fabulous day. Remember, you're really good at this. And remember, we are here to help get you through the exam. Have a fabulous day, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode.